Hi, this is Jared Ankman, and this is a, a video in the series on the mathematics of poker by myself and Bill Chen. Uh, this is the first episode of Introduction to Probability. I will be working looking at uh, probability, which is a fairly basic concept and is um, integral to any mathematical understanding of poker. Uh, we'll spend a little bit of time uh, defining some terms and discussing the implications of some material that you may be familiar with. However, we'll take a step toward uh, being a little more rigorous, uh, make some mention of some various uh, aspects of probability that uh, not everyone might be aware of. However, uh, those of you who have a grounding in rigorous probability theory will notice that uh, we're still uh, in a simplified mode here. So what is probability? Uh, probability is a way of modeling uh, random processes. So there are uh, many systems where we cannot predict uh, what's going to happen before it happens, or even if we could predict it with enough information, we can treat it as though it were random. And instead of uh, trying to predict that this thing or that thing will happen, uh, we can instead specify what the possible outcomes are and uh, make statements about the relative likelihoods of those outcomes. So some examples of the types of random processes that we might look at are a coin flip. Uh, it could be either heads or tails. Uh, a six-sided die roll, which could take any number from one to six. Or even continuous things, such as a temperature reading, so a temperature could go uh, over a wide variety of values and uh, in, in fact we could actually have completely continuous um, distributions where uh, we can have any number um, and have arbitrary precision. So when we talk about probability um, we, we have this uh, term that we borrow from statistics. Um, so what we're interested in are, is a particular experiment. And uh, of course this comes from statistical design, but it's a, it's a good word to, to describe that there's some controlled situation that we can uh, more or less fully understand, even if we don't know everything about it. Um, for our purposes, what, we, what we're going to mean by this clearly defined experiment is that we can specify in some way, either as a list of possible outcomes or as uh, some other mathematical construct that describes what could happen, um, the set of all the possible outcomes of the experiment. Uh, in all of this, we're going to call the set of all the outcomes the sample space, and we'll designate it with this uh, Greek letter omega and we'll call the possible outcomes elementary events. So here are some examples of uh, the sample spaces from the uh, random processes we defined previously. Uh, a coin flip uh, consists of two possible uh, elementary events, uh, which are heads and tails. Uh, a six-sided die roll can take on any of the integers from one to six. So uh, omega here is the set from, of all the numbers from one to six. And supposing that our temperature gauge has an accuracy of 0.1 degrees, then we can say that omega it can take on any value of, uh, that is a multiple of 0.1 uh, in, in the integers. So here are some examples of things that are not sample spaces. And uh, things like this let us know uh, what the limitations are of talking about probability, and, and that we can sometimes um, get a little bit confused by uh, various situations. So uh, one example of something that is not uh, a very good sample space is what might happen in politics tomorrow. Um, so it, it's true that we that what happen, what might happen in politics tomorrow might be treated as a random process. However, there are essentially an infinite number and, and an un, unspecifiable amount of things that might happen and all the various gradations. So it would be very, very uh, imp impractical to attempt to uh, understand the entire space in, in the sense that we can give it all, uh, we can apply to it uh, probability. So in this sense, like, we can't really um, talk about all the things that might happen in politics tomorrow. Another thing, with, another uh, example of something that's not a sample space is something that comes up very often when you are a math guy in poker, is people ask you, oh, what, is, what are the odds that somebody might get quads 
twice and a straight flush once. And this is kind of a poor probability distribution because it's true that we can calculate the chance that, say, if you dealt three exact hands, then the person might get those particular hands. However, the question that's really being asked is, what are the odds that some really improbable event is going to happen in you know, right next to me in a casino? And so these are not very good sample spaces. We want to stick to things that we can sort of characterize completely. So we'll define probability in the following way. Suppose that we have some experiment and we have the elementary events from that experiment. Now we can assign numbers to each of the elementary events. Now, in some sense, we can assign any numbers to them. And um, what we'll see is that there are three rules that we that our assignment of numbers need to follow in order for it to be a probability. So we call the assignment a probability distribution and the, the numbers uh, the probability if the following three things are true. And Basically, I'm going to go through them quickly. The first one is that probabilities have to be positive. So there are no negative probabilities because that's a fairly meaningless concept. And so we restrict um, the probability of an event to be positive or zero. Uh, the second rule is that the probability that one elementary event or a, a different elementary event is equal to the sum of their individual probabilities. So that, well, that's what we mean by A and B being distinct events, especially in the elementary case, is that this is an outcome and that's an outcome and it can't be both of them. Hence, we can say that it's one or, it's one or the other and the, the chance of, it, of one of them happening is equal to the sum of their individual probabilities. And third, we want to say that the probability that something is going to happen is equal to one. That is, if we specify some set that covers the entire sample space, then the probability of that is 1. That's the end of this video. In the next video, we'll look at the meaning of probability, uh, at some probability distributions, and at some rules of probability implied by the definition here.